Happy crafters, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. Look at the hell. Oh my god, what have I done? I'm Raphael. <laughs> I'm Raphael. I used to work in the film industry as a professional steady camera operator until I discovered that I could make any of the movie props that I love using pretty much only that. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna show you how to make Bocaton helmet from the Mandalorian show using only cardboard, glue, a filler, and some acrylic pens. And of course, you'll find the complete list of everything I use in the description box below, as well as all templates necessary for you to make this impressive helmet yourself at home. Let's make a prop! Do it! So the first thing to do is cutting out the patterns from the templates that you'll find in my shop in the description box below. Glue them on your cardboard using a regular glue stick and cut the patterns using a precision knife, a box cutter or very sharp scissor. You'll have to do that for all the following pieces of this tutorial. First, cut the piece number one, smash the corrugations to make it more malleable and close the notches with glue. To glue all the pieces of this tutorial, I used a cheap 15 watt hot glue gun that I bought from Amazon. And of course, I put the link to it in the description box below as well. Next, repeat the process with the pieces 2 and 3 and glue the three elements together on the edges here. Cut the pieces number 4, 5 and 6, glue them together on the edges here, give the whole element a curve in the direction of the corrugations, and glue this edge here on this edge here, matching the tips of these two small triangles on both spaces. Next, using thin uncorrugated cardboard like cereal boxes, tissue boxes or Amazon envelopes, cut the piece number 7 and glue it on this edge in an angle. From that same cardboard, cut the piece number 8 and glue it over here the same way. Then glue the piece number 9 on the side over here and transfer this small hole into the helmet. Next, glue the piece number 10 here, flush with the piece number 9 and, if needed, remove what exceeds with a precision knife. As many of you know already, I made so many things from the Mandalorian show, especially Mondo's things. Like his armor, his weapons, his jetpack and even Bogus himself. But would you like me to make more Bokatan related things? Maybe her armor, her headband or something else? Comment your comments in the comments. Next, cut the pieces number 12 to 16, glue the two pieces number 11 on top of each other, flush with this red line here, bend the number 12 on the red lines, that way and glue the openings on the sides together. Next, glue the underside here on the piece 11, flush with this edge, and of course, glue the sides and the bottom of the pieces as well. And if one of your four cats jump on your work table, kicking everything, just push him away kindly. Go away, little cat, I'm working here. Next, glue the bottom part of the piece number 13 on the top over here. Glue the piece number 14 on the back of the piece number 15, that way. Bend the red lines, close the notch, and glue it on the top of the piece number 13 over here. Glue the piece number 16 on top of the piece number 15, bend the sides of the piece number 17, and glue it here on the top of the piece number 13. Next, using the reversed pieces, make the outer side exactly the same way and glue the two parts together on their middle edges. Next, from that same thin uncorrugated cardboard, cut 4 19 and 1 18, glue the 4 19 on top of each other and glue it in the middle of the piece number 18. Cut 6 pieces number 20 and glue them in the opening that way. If needed, don't hesitate to cut another one to fill a remaining gap if you end up with one. And glue the two sides of it behind the back of your helmet in the opening. Now, to prevent these two parts from moving too much during the following steps, glue lightly two small pieces of cardboard in the middle to keep them still. So now, to get rid of all of the imperfections of the cardboard, we're going to apply a thin layer of filler to smooth out the entire helmet. To do so, cheap speckle that you'll find on Amazon will do the job just fine. I used this one from Liquitex, as it remains a little bit more flexible once dried. Of course, I put the link to both of them in the description box below as well. So cover the entire helmet with it. To do so, you can use silicone spatulas like that. But to be honest, I feel like it is easier to do it with my fingers. And so, don't hesitate to use small tools like clay sculptile tools or the tip of a knife to define better the narrowest areas. 
Don't hesitate to smooth out the paste even more with a brush and some water that will make your life easier when you'll be sending it out with sandpaper later on. But if you don't have filler paste or don't want to buy some, I recommend you to watch this video right here in the cart where I show you how to make Mondo's helmet but using paper instead of the modeling paste. Of course, it won't be as smooth looking as if you were using a filler paste, but you still have a very accurate helmet that you'll be very proud of at the end. And of course, once the filler has dried, sand it down with sandpaper. Doing so, don't hesitate to add some water as well that will slightly melt the filler which will help a lot with the sanding so that you end up with a very smooth surface everywhere. Also, if you see that the foldings of the cardboard tend to be a little bit too visible on the outside, don't hesitate to add some lines of hot glue in the inside to keep the surface even. In this video, you're going to see me painting this helmet using spray cans from different brands, hairbrush, pretty much all the type of paints I had around here, actually. And as many of you know already, painting my props wasn't a thing on this channel until very recently. So when I started to paint it, I didn't know that you shouldn't use different brand of paint to stack layer of paint on top of each other like that. Because, well, you will end up with layer of paint that doesn't stick or cracks at the end once dry and you don't want that believe me but don't worry i corrected these mistakes in the description box below as you find only pants from the valero brands which is the brand i should have used to paint everything with this helmet but of course if you want to use another brand it's totally fine just stick to the same one for everything and you'll be okay so first using the reference pictures color all black parts of the helmet then mask them with masking tape and color the entire helmet with a silver paint. Mine had a pretty strong chrome effect, but a simple silver paint as the one I put in the description box below will do the job perfectly. And next, the same way you did for the black parts of the helmet and using reference pictures, mask all the parts that you want to keep silver at the end. Also, remove that one and put it back in the hole so that you'll be able to paint the sides of the earpieces with the next layer of paint. As I used completely different brands of paint, I had to sand down the surface of my chrome pen so that the next layer of paint I'm going to apply is going to stick to it. You won't need to do that if you are using the same brand of pen for everything or if you are using the ones I put in the description box below. Next, using regular toothpaste and the reference pictures mask all silver scratches of the helmet. Again, the idea here is to keep them visible throughout the next layers of paint. Next, color the entire helmet with a dark blue. And once your paint has dried, remove them with some toilet paper and water. Mask this piece on the back of the helmet and still using toothpaste and the reference pictures, mask all the scratches again but cover slightly largest areas to keep some of the dark blue visible throughout the next layer of paint. And paint the helmet with a light blue. Again, don't forget that I put all paints you need to use in the description box below this video. Then with a pencil, draw a line on the top front of the helmet here. Apply masking tape on the edges of it as well as on the edges of the cheek pieces over here and protect the rest of the helmet using plastic bags or something equivalent. I also added a few dots of toothpaste here and there to keep some part of the light blue visible throughout the white layer I'm going to apply in the next step. Then cover the whole upper part of the helmet with more masking tape and still using the reference pictures, draw the design with a pencil on it. And then cut out the part of the designs that you want to paint. Paint these two designs with a dark grey and do the same for the middle one but paint it with a black paint. Once dry, remove the masking tape and draw the last design on the top of the helmet which is five triangles. And again, mask the edges and paint them in black. Now you can remove all masking tapes you have left on the helmet as well as the two spaces. Now, because you have several layers of paint on them, you may need a dual knife or a small tool like that to remove them efficiently. Next, using that same thin uncorrugated cardboard, cut the pieces 21 to 24, glue the 21s on top of each other, do the same with the pieces 22, 23 and 24, and glue both elements together that way. And of course, the same way you did for the helmet, cover it with modeling paste, sand it down, first apply on the head of it the same light blue you used on the helmet, mask the areas you want to keep blue, paint it in black, and paint the world with a silver paint. Now at this point, this helmet looks very good already, but it feels a little bit too clean. So to make it feel a little bit more lifting, we're going to weather it with a mix of acrylic black paint and water. So put some acrylic paint in the cup and about 10 times more of water. 
and cover the entire helmet with it. So this part is going to be pretty messy, but that's alright, that's what we want. The idea here is to make it more dirty, so that's okay. And then we move the bulk of it with some toilet paper. Doing so, you're going to see that the pants is going to stay in some areas, which is going to make it way more lift in. Next, cut a piece of corrugated cardboard like that, roll it up with your fingers, and glue the last centimeter. The idea here is to make a wall that is big enough to enter this hole with some friction. No pun intended. Then place it in the ear walls of the helmet, cut what exceeds, glue a small magnet on one of the tips of the cardboard wall you have left, glue the two elements to make some kind of a T, glue another magnet above the hole inside the helmet. Now you can assemble the wrench finder with the helmet. Now if it turns out for you that doesn't stick well enough inside the hole of the wrench finder, add some glue inside the hole. But doing so, keep in mind that you may have a hard time to remove it if you need to store it somewhere or for traveling. Then I cut the visor out of a cheap replacement visor that I bought from Amazon. And of course I put the link to it in the description box below as well. Remove the two small pieces of cardboard in the front over here and glue the visor inside. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now, if you're here, you're very likely looking for a way to make costumes and props from the Mandalorian show, and I got you covered with that. Just click this playlist right here, and you'll learn how to make Mando's helmet, his armor, his weapons, even Gogus himself, and many more things from the Mandalorian universe. And of course, subscribe if you think I deserved it, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next epic build with cardboard. Thank you so much for watching, and I see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. oh, fuck. <laughs>